South China Morning Post, 29th of January 2023, China wants Australia to abandon its commitments to the Quad as relations with China warm. China used trade embargoes to intimidate Australia for three years, and the new Australian administration aims to take advantage of the developments. In the news, the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue Quad, grouping has lost numerous members. Given the partners' diminished economic dependency on China and their different perspectives on global events, some have questioned the plan's practicality. As Australia's commerce with China has decreased, former Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi even once characterized the Quad as dissolving sea foam. Since then, the Alliance of Australia, India, Japan, and the United States has grown to handle a variety of global concerns, such as supply chains and vaccinations, refuting Wang's characterization of the alliance and developing new supply networks, lowering Australia's reliance on China's hegemony. However, the Quad's initiative is a relatively new phenomenon. It has met over the previous two years to discuss various world challenges, including maritime security, COVID-19, essential technologies, Ukraine, and supply chain resilience. Through the Quad, the four countries' bilateral ties have strengthened, and they have discovered more areas of collaboration. The genuine threat posed by China was the initiator of this development. The previous two years' events incentivized enhanced cooperation among the four countries to specifically handle the China menace, especially for countries like Australia and India, who have in the past been wary about taking solid positions against China. For India, the conflict in the Galwan Valley and the standoff in Doklama appended the over 50-year-old tranquility on its border with China. There has been no desire to return to the pre-Galwan era since the fights between Indian and Chinese troops in the valley. The potential for improved ties has decreased due to recent club and stick clashes between the two nations' forces in December. The beef, barley, and wine controversy and Beijing's unofficial restriction on coal and lobster exports urgently required Australia to protect itself from any future economic coercion and establish new supply lines independent of China. Canberra was determined to fortify alliances with other Quad members during the previous administration of Scott Morrison, and the economic cooperation and trade agreement with India was completed. Australia increased its security cooperation by joining the AUKUS alliance with the UK and the US and taking part in military training like the Malabar naval drills with its Quad counterparts. New Delhi has kept up the momentum to lessen the danger from China. As long as Beijing tries to alter the line of control unilaterally and keeps deploying troops along the border, India's relations with China cannot be typical, according to Indian External Affairs Minister Subramanian Jayshankar. Australia today cannot be described in the same way. Under the Morrison administration, Canberra solidified its reputation as a trustworthy Quad partner. However, the Albanese administration seeks to reduce tensions with China to levels before 2020. Tim Ayres, Australia's Associate Minister for Trade, most recently saw Wang Xiaowen, his Chinese counterpart, outside the World Economic Forum and urged China to eliminate its illegal trade barriers. The meeting was another step towards stabilizing the relationship between our two countries, he continued in a tweet. Australia was motivated to pursue trade agreements with significant markets like India to lessen its dependency on the Chinese market and to consider China's economic challenges. China thinks that the tether is gradually dissolving due to its policy measures, which are, at best temporary and include the removal of export restrictions on goods from Australia. Moreover, as a mineral exporting economy, Australia cannot afford to completely exclude China from its trade calculations, not just in the Indo-Pacific but globally. Unlike Japan, which has adopted a China plus one strategy to diversify its supply chains and sought to move some of its manufacturing out of China, or the US, which has maintained the momentum in its trade war with China through more export controls and sanctions. While the US and UK are the two countries that invest the most in Australia, 
several industries are heavily reliant on the Chinese market and capital because China is the country with the most significant demand for rare earth materials like lithium, cobalt, and iron ore. Western Australia's economy strongly depends on its mineral exports to China, and mining corporations depend more on Chinese funding to stay afloat. New markets for essential minerals may emerge as the globe quickly switches from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles driven by lithium-ion batteries. However, there are currently few feasible alternatives due to China's experience and comparative advantages in mineral processing. Further, given the Indian government's strong preference for green hydrogen over lithium for its autos, Australia has sought out India's sizable market as a replacement for China for wine and other exports, but that would not be possible for vital minerals, China claims. In a recent interview with CGT Ernst Yanwei, Kevin Rudd stated that he believes China and Australia have begun to restore their bilateral relationship. The former Prime Minister has strongly advocated for improved ties with China. Hence, his nomination as Australia's ambassador to the US may signal that China is preparing for a repeat of 2008, when Australia effectively left the Quad. Canberra's recent overtures suggest that Australia may easily be the weakest link in the Quad grouping, at the same time. The US, Japan, and India show no signs of altering their attitude toward Beijing. This is because the Australian leadership and people are gullible, 